I've done my share. We all have. We ain't gonna win this war. I led a soldier's life. I've never seen anything as brutally clear as this. This town is of no military significance whatsoever, General. If we hold this raid for a couple hours, we can keep them away. Well, the boys are ready for a brawl, no doubt of that. I left my spectacles over there. What is the name of this town? If you're going to fight alongside us, there's a few things I want you to know. This regiment was formed last summer. There were a thousand of us then. There are less than 300 of us now. They were farmers and school teachers. We are an army out to set other men free. Gentlemen and laborers. Virginia is not about to let itself be ruled by some president in Washington. Those boys in blue, they never quite seem the enemy. I know. They came from Maine and Texas. We cannot retreat. We cannot withdraw. From New York and Virginia. No 15,000 men ever made can take that bridge. This war goes on and on, and the price gets ever higher. I want this to be the final battle. A conflict that turned neighbor against neighbor. Old friends off to war. Friend against friend. See in hell, Billy Yank. See you in hell, Johnny Red. soldiers. War made them brothers. Courage made them heroes. Gettysburg, based on the Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Killer Angels. And does it matter after all who wins? Was that ever really the question? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. I know I'd go from rags to riches. To me, being a gangster was better than being president of the United States. Never ride on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. I mean, being somebody in the neighborhood that was full of nobodies. You look like a gangster. By the time I grew up, there was 30 billion a year in cargo moving through Idlewild Airport. And believe me, we tried to steal every bit of it. You might know who we are, but we know who you are. You understand? Yeah. What kind of people are these? Life is blood, a dream. What do you do? I'm in construction. <laughs> if we wanted something, we just took it. And you didn't even think about it. Because it was better than Citibank. It's great, but nice. You got some nerve standing me up. Nobody does that to me. Who the hell do you think you are? Frankie Valley or some oh. kind of big shot? I was living in a fantasy. Look at my eyes. He's not Jewish. For most of the guys, killings got to be accepted. <laughs> Murder was the only way that everybody stayed in line. What are we gonna do with him? We can't just dump him on the don't street. Worry, don't worry. I know a place I'll never find him. You got out of line, you got whacked. Everybody knew the rules. Hey, Henry! It's an arm! Very funny, guys. It's a leg! It's a wing! <laughs> what do you like? The leg and a wing, Henry? Okay, you ready? Sometimes I. For us, to live any other way was nuts. Anything I wanted was a phone call away. <laughs> and we were treated like movie stars with muscle. We had it all just for the asking. It's gonna be a good summer. <laughs> it was a glorious time. It's power.
empowered by violence. On the streets where the violent have power, a new generation carries on an old tradition. Dear Mr. Brian Boyd, no doubt by now you have received full information about the untimely death of your son. However, there are some personal details. That Believe I very strongly. No words of mine can ever. He was a fine him. soldier. And Regarding the circumstances leading to his death, felt his loss tremendously. Robert's commanding officer. His heroic service to his country. He was a great soldier, a dedicated friend. The grace of God and the aid of your Those son. Those of us I'm who alive, please today. accept my most sincere condolences. We'll live in our memories. To you, my deepest sympathy. Colonel, I've got something you should know about. Yes. These two men died in Normandy. This one in Omaha Beach. Sean Moran. This one in Utah. Peter Ryan. This man was killed last week in New Guinea. Daniel Ryan. The three men are brothers, sir. I've just learned that this afternoon their mother is getting all three telegrams. That's not all. There's a fourth brother, the youngest. He's somewhere in Normandy. We don't know where. That boy is alive. We're going to send somebody to find him. And we're going to get him the hell out of there. Some private in the 101st lost three of his brothers, and he's got a ticket home. It's not going to be easy to find one particular soldier in the whole damn war. down so good that I ran paradise on earth. I had one of the biggest casinos in Las Vegas to run for 10 years. You know, if I did it, I'd have to run it my way. Nobody's going to interfere with you running the casino, I guarantee you. Vicky, you're a guy. Make a lot of money for us. Or so keep a good eye on it. All right. Look at this place. It's made of money. What do you think about me moving out here? I just got to tell you, it's no joke out here. You got to keep a low profile. Right off the bat, they don't like guys like us. Oh, yeah. oh. You like your money a lot, yes, don't you? Yes, a lot. You? Well, how about that? Yes. Yeah. I want to settle down. I want a family. You got the wrong girl. You'll be set up for the rest of your life. You don't know me. What do you know me two, three months? They had it all. They ran the show. And it was paradise while it lasted. Frankie! They found a guy's head in the desert. That's no good. We got a problem. He doesn't listen to me. Maybe he should get lost for a while. Take a vacation. Can't make it any clearer, Sam. I would just get out. I tried to do everything for you, even though I knew deep down inside you would bury me. I buried you. You buried yourself. I have to be able to trust you with my life. Can I trust you? Can I trust you? I will go to the FBI. I will go to the police. I am not protecting you anymore. You want me to get out of my own town? You only exist out here because of me. He's a loose cannon. No! Stop it! You realize what you can do? You can get us all killed! You want to get rid of me? Here I am. Go ahead, get rid of me. What have I been telling you? Yeah, I know. Stay in school, get two educations. I know. That's right. 
This is my life, not yours. This is not for you. No guns. I first met Sonny in 1960. I was nine years old. He was the number one man in the neighborhood. And as I grew, he grew in power. He became a boss. And I was his friend. In a world called the Bronx. Look, I'm your father. I love you. You're breaking my heart. Sonny, trust me. That man can never trust anybody. The sooner you know that, the better. He was caught in a tug of war between his hardworking father. I tell you something, go to school to go to school. You don't understand. It's not what you say. It's what he sees. It's the clothes. It's the cars. It's the money. I treat that kid like he's my son. He ain't your son. He's my son. And the man who owned the neighborhood. Don't you trust anybody? No. It's a horrible way to live. For me, it's the only way. Is it better to be loved or feared? I would rather be feared. Because fear lasts longer than love. What was I gonna do? Run away? Make people think I got no heart? I mean, what makes you think you're so special? Mm. He'll hurt you like anybody. Mm. Sometimes hurting somebody ain't the answer. I know who you are, Sonny, and I know what you could do. This time you're wrong. You don't fool the man's family. So what are you going to fight this? Stay away from my son! Robert De Niro, Jazz Palm and Terry. You worry about yourself, your family, and the people that are close to you. That's what it comes down to. A Bronx Tale.